definitely just brain control. <laughs> <laughs> so you might think it's controlling someone else's brain, or your brain controlling everything around you, but it's not exactly that. It's an innovative technology that enables us to process brain waves and read the user's intent. So while we can't really read the user's emotions or what they're feeling, we can figure out what they want for their intent. So in order to understand how we can read the brain, we first have to understand how the brain works. So basically the brain is made up of billions and billions of neurons. And these neurons release electrical impulses. So these are basically ionic compounds called neurotransmitters, and they form electrical potential. And this is the basis for how we can discern the, uh, the brain waves to read the brain. So they talk. The technology used is called EEG, which stands for electroencephalography, and basically consists of electrodes like this, which act as voltometers, which measure electrical activity of neurons. So basically, the the uh, the ions being transferred back and forth between neurons, they create the electrical potential. This is what's measuring their voltmeters, and so they're placed on the scalp, which is relatively <coughs> set up. But the signal is not completely clear. It's kind of noisy. If you want a completely clear signal, you have to actually implant these uh, electrodes into the brain. But the one we have is this. So then the data from this goes into a BCI, which processes it. So this is the BCI when we use. And it goes on ahead like so. So he mentioned BCI. How does the BCI work? What is it? What's a BCI? BCI stands for Brain Computer Interface. And as you might guess, it's just, it consists of any device or system that is controlled by the brain. Okay, so how does it work? Okay, first you have to have a signal in the first place. Um, this is used mostly using EEG, which is the technology that I just described. You can use other technologies to be the brain, brain such as uh, blood flow, metabolic activity. These might be more accurate, but most of these technologies are intrusive or really difficult to set up. EEG is so much more efficient, so that's why it's used for this time. Once you have a signal, you have to process it. Basically, you have to get rid of the excess noise. It's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job. And then this resulting signal is sent to a translation algorithm. This looks for patterns in the brain waves that might signify some sort of intention. The intention is extracted from the raw brain data, and it's sent to the device and controls it. This device can be machinery, like a robotic arm, a wheelchair, or it can be applications, like a software, video games, and such. BCIs must be programmed, because otherwise, you know, the translation algorithm doesn't want to know what to do. You have to tell it what is it looking for, what pattern is it looking for, and what this pattern means, if, uh, and what commands it will give to the devices. And the devices also much, must know uh, what to do with these commands. Okay, so EEG is a cool new technology, but what can it actually be used for in real life? Well, two main applications are complications and amputees. So, right now, EEG is serving as the first truly viable form of, of uh, communication between co patients and the outside world, because before this, it was very hard to communicate, but now they can answer questions and people can tell what they're thinking. It also serves as a test to determine whether a coma patient is brain dead or not. So, amputees. Um, as of right now, they have very severe um, limits on the motion of their prosthetic limbs. But with an EEG-based BCI, they can actually use that to, it will read their intent and then their prosthetic limbs will actually move. So recently, some amputees actually were able to pick up a water bottle with a prosthetic arm and drink from it, which is a pretty amazing advancement in technology. So our project goals were to create and design an application that runs and is controlled by a BCI, and to also optimize the usage of a BCI to get the clearest signal we can. So the BCI we use is an EEG-based BCI, which is what we've been talking about. Um, most of these EEG-based BCIs actually cost over $1,000. This one only costs $300, so it's uh, accessible, commercially available, so anyone can have one as provided they have the money. Um, it consists of 14 electrodes to measure the activity, and you can see them on its head, and this is just a chart of where they are. And it has two gyroscopes to basically measure the orientation of your head, which can be used also to control like a video game. Also, which is really helpful, Emotive provides an extensive C++ library, so it's 
really easy to program it. Like developers without a headset can actually develop for the headset, which is a really nice functionality. And this API actually allows you to train the headset as well. Like I mentioned before, you have, it has to know which uh, patterns correspond with what intention. You can do that with the API. Okay, before I mentioned how like the PCI works, um, how does this work? It's really flexible, so it's a little different. Um, so first, it, the headset itself contains a piece of software that anyone calls its emo engine. Um, what this e engine does is it takes the raw EEG and gyroscope data, processes it, packages it into a nice, a length, a nice data structure called emo state. Whenever there's a change in this emo state, or an update, or a new emo state, um, an emo event is created, and uh, this emo event is directly accessible by the code through the API, so we can tell what's happening. The emo state basically contains the state of your brain, rotations. Um, it can tell what expressions you're making, like if your eyebrows are raised or lowered, whether you're smiling or not. It can also tell if you're frustrated, meditating, and it can also recognize whatever commands you have trained it to remember. And the emo state, Basically, you can use the code to access the email state from the email event and use it to control like an application or data. <coughs> we did this with Palm, you know, very simple. In console Palm program in C++ using the Microsoft Visual Studio. Very simple, three controls you can have it up, down, or you can keep it in place. Uh, we experimented by controlling it with two different ways, using facial expressions, uh, furrowing to lower the paddle and raising the eyebrows to raise the paddle and train commands. Basically have them recognize Ben's own pattern for the abstract thought of up and down. We found that the facial expressions were much better because his um, pattern seemed to fluctuate depending on the environment and setting and his mood. <laughs> so they're not always the same, the patterns. That's the what should be a video of him playing Pong with his eyebrows. Quiet back here is fluctuates very little. Maybe it's 
little and the slope is nearly zero. However, the loud graph here fluctuates greatly and jumps down a lot. Our next graph, we show what occurs when a subject blinks. This may seem like a substantial jump, but it is in fact only 100 microns, which is very ephemeral to the entire EEG readings. However, our next graph shows what occurs during a jaw cut. We can see a much more severe jump here, which is more like 1,000 microns, which would have a great effect on our results. Next, we use something called fast Fourier transform method to analyze our data. Now, what the fast Fourier transform method is based on is the fact that any periodic function can be made up of an infinite sum of sine and cosine waves. Now, if we are able to examine these sine and cosine waves and determine their amplitude, we can determine their frequency. Thus, we can change a graph of dependent on uh, time into a graph dependent on frequency. Now, you can see here that there is a great bulge uh, for frequencies for and below. Now, this is because of the noise from our data. Okay. In future uh, applications of the BCI, we can say we don't want any frequencies for and below. And you can make our graph here much more accurate. You can also see in this graph here that there's a bulge here from the 6 to 7 range and here from the 9 to 10 range. Now, this bulge represents the different frequencies of the alpha and theta waves of the brain. Now, these waves occur during deep thought and deep meditation. Thus, we can say that the choir environment is optimal for using the BCI as it would allow any other factors to be shown and not have any extraneous factors coming in and affecting our data. And we can also use additional signal processing to make our data more accurate. So while BCI and EG are extremely powerful forms of technology, they're still relatively um, new. So if you continue research and develop them, within the next 50 years, you can start seeing devices such as a smart car, which is completely powered by a brain. If you just think about moving you move. Or smart houses, which react to your thoughts, like open a drawer, close a fridge, or even smart bikes, which move on command by just thinking. And so the possibilities are endless, and we should continue to research and develop this extremely powerful form of technology. Uh, I'd like to thank our project mentor Mike Wu and our TA Josh Finder and anyone else who uh, who uh, sponsored the program. <laughs>